All right, folks, welcome again to our podcast. Today we're going to be talking a lot about some of the things that we want in the new year for our parents. So one of the big programs that's coming about this year, uh, as a matter of fact, it'll be next week, uh, January 15th, um, is a program for parents about uh, technology and the use of technology by our children. Uh, it's important that we um, have our parents there. It will be up at the high school from 7 to 9 on the 15th, and I'm here with Janet DeCenzo, uh, who's a very important part of this entire process because Janet works for the district um, as our technology integration specialist. And of course, she works with special ed students as well as regular ed students and their use of technology. So she's an expert um, at what some of our students are doing online uh, and with their phones. So we wanted to talk to her today about this important program that's coming to you next week. So Janet, tell me about um, how we decided to have this program and what it what it will look like. So a few years back I uh, visited Google in New York City for a special event that they had that was focused on digital safety, digital citizenship, and uh, student responsibility. Right. So um, one of the things that um, Matt Shea and I have talked about a lot is, you know, what are students really um, capable of of understanding when they have that cell phone in their hand. Right, the responsibility um, of it all. Right, right. right. Yeah. And, and developmentally, do they understand what possible long-term ramifications of things that they see and look up and, and send out on right. social media? So um, we decided that, you know, in, it, as much as it's very important to try and educate the students, I also think it's really important to make sure that the parents understand that there are possible long-term ramifications for things that maybe their children are doing with their cell phones um, and really don't understand those long-term right, ramifications. Right, so, right. And sometimes, unfortunately, there's legal ramifications. So um, so that's why we are bringing in this uh, the Sussex County uh, Prosecutor's Office to come and talk to parents about right. that. And the idea simply is, folks, is not to scare anybody, but we want everybody to realize that the powerful tool that our children are walking around with as early as the age of 10, 11, or 12 um, is uh, something that brings a lot of responsibility and some legal issues that we every once in a while have to deal with. Right. Um, but as parents, you will have to deal with, and we want to make sure that everybody's aware of it. So really, it's a great place to start a family conversation, I would assume. Right. Right? So the idea simply is that this evening, we're trying to free you up as much as possible so that you can attend this. So there'll be child care there yes. as well. So um, the key club members up at the high school mm -hmm. um, have volunteered to help out with some child care, but it's not just a child care kind of night. We're also asking them to come up with lesson plans and activities that focus on digital citizenship, but at a young child's level. So kindness, right. um, expressing things face to face, things like that. Right. Um, so for those parents who are going to be dropping off children, right. uh, we're offering child care from children from age 5 to 11. Uh, they can bring their kids up to the high school at 10 of 7. Yeah, drop just them a little off. bit earlier before the meeting starts so we get to, you know, make sure everybody's okay and safe. Mm -hmm. right. And there'll be Chromebooks up there for activities. They'll have a snack. They'll have some games. Um, so that is, you know, the high school. Uh, we're really trying to involve a lot of our students in right. this. Um, we also have the hospitality CTE students um, creating a, a, a snack for in, intermission. Don't miss that. <laughs> those kids are great. Yeah. <laughs> We've had um, our graphic arts students come and develop a flyer for the night. So right. that was done by Angus Kellish. He did a great job on our advertising. Um, so we're really trying to make this a community event. Right, right. And the hope is that night that these kind of discussions uh, blossom from here. So yeah. um, what would you imagine, after, other than the legal discussion, what other pieces will, will be part of that evening? Okay. So we're trying to give parents tools. Right. So um, here, here are things you need to be aware of. Here's, how, here's what you can do about it. Right. So we're talking a little bit about filtering. Good. We're talking about filtering at home and at school. We're talking right. about ways that parents could better help manage their child's cell phones. Um, we're seeing a lot of kids who are really tired all day because they're on their cell phones all night. They don't right. want to turn them off. Right. Um, so ways that parents can help manage that cell phone usage. Um, we've also got up on our VTSD parent site, um, in addition to the registration form that you can click on and tell us that you're coming, we also have a list of 
uh, websites for resources for parents how to talk to your child we have a cell phone usage contract that you can talk to your child about and both sign okay. so a lot of tools um, so it's not just oh be aware of this and be afraid but right. here are some tools that you can use when you go home after that night and um, you know work with your child as a parent I often felt that it was very important to have the support of another organization behind you when you were saying no to your child mm -hmm. or maybe to your child or let's talk about this with your child so I think one of the things that will happen uh, next Wednesday night is that sense of you know I'm not the only one saying no to my child or I'm not the only one saying whoa wait let's take a look at this mm -hmm. so I, I think that this kind of event for parents would give them some fortitude uh, when they're talking with their child. Yeah. 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 So it's next Wednesday evening. It's 7 to 9. It's January 15th, 7 to 9 at the high school. Child care, snacks, food, all that will be taken care of by our fantastic staff and group of students. But it's a, really a night for our parents to come and have a discussion with people who are experts, who know where our students are, and where we need to be as parents to make sure that they're safe mm -hmm. and that there's no legal ramifications for some of their actions. Right. And that's why we're bringing in an expert, really. Um, per, yeah. um, Detective Tom Laird is coming, and he is an expert in this field. So we thought it would be better fr coming from somebody who, mm -hmm. who knows the area and, and is familiar with some of the cases that have come through Sussex County. And oftentimes when the cases come through, when the person reveals some of those cases, we are surprised at the ramifications for some of these things. So, all right, so it's gonna be a great opportunity for our Vernon parents. And of course, Janet and Matt, thank you very much for all of your efforts with this. And then the following week, um, there's a program called Screenagers that's happening at uh, Glen Meadow. That will be on the 21st, the following Thursday, uh, in which they're doing somewhat the same idea. It's a video, it's, yeah. a, it's a movie about um, screen time and teenagers using digital media. Right, which of course is a major concern for us, not because we don't want our children using screens. No one in the technology department would ever say that. <laughs> <laughs> but, the, but the truth of the matter is we are worried about their sleep patterns mm -hmm. and we are worried about any kind of responsibility that comes with um, the new technology. So, Vernon parents, we're here for you and we would love to see you next Wednesday maybe the following Thursday if you can't make next Wednesday, but I think next Wednesday will be a really important point uh, in your life as you look at where our children are and how important it is to keep them safe. Hi Vernon, we've got some great things going on as always uh, in Vernon Township this week, so I want to talk about some of the great things that are happening. One of the interesting things that is happening is Rolling Hills, and I'm here with uh, Mr. Villegas, who is our phys ed teacher here, and he's doing this wonderful program with our students that we wanted to talk a little bit about and show you a little bit of. So tell us a little bit about the program. Um, it originally started as the Jump Rope for Heart program in uh, 1989, was right. our first year, uh -huh. um, with obviously some uh, different instructors that brought it to the, to the school. And it evolved to um, what they call now the Kids Heart Challenge, and it is a fundraiser for the American Heart Association. And last year was our biggest year, right. um, raising over $9,000 for research and education. That's an amazing amount of money for our children to raise. Yes. A, so how do they go about the process of signing up and, and registering the donations? Um, of course it evolved since um, 1988. Now it's um, online donations um, can be made. They could also collect with an envelope um, from hopefully friends and, and family and neighbors. We don't encourage door-to-door -door soliciting for that purpose. And we also have a major earner, his name is um, Adam Bailey, who is at Lounsbury now, who actually recently came back for an envelope to collect to be involved again this year. <laughs> great job, Adam. Just one more great example of the great kids here in, this, in the Absolutely. district. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. So the, the program itself, the children uh, then gather and um, they keep records of their exploits, if you will, in, in phys ed classes. They right? do, and they earn um, some prizes along the way oh, from good. the American Heart Association, which is, of course, a big motivator. But I believe that they honestly feel that the, the best motivation is raising money for the education and, and the research fund. And caring for other people. And caring for other people. Now, absolutely. there's a kickoff, Darren, this Friday, I yes. believe. Yes. yes. So um, how does that work? Lori Waymeyer, she's our regional director from the American Heart Association. She'll come in and um, she gets the kids excited, explains basically what I just told you. Um, 
and she's going to do Cedar Mountain as well. Uh, Mr. Mm -hmm. Hernandez is running the same program Great. over there. Mm -hmm. We have a little bit of a friendly competition about raising money together. Oh, uh, who uh, will very, raise more? Very friendly. Uh -huh. Very friendly. Uh -huh. We keep it friendly. All right. And um, she's great. Um, she goes over the program from the start to finish, what the money is used for, and, and she actually is bringing a guest, which is a surprise to me. It may actually be um, someone that is in need of some uh, research and, and funds. Oh, terrific. So I'm not sure. So I'm looking forward to that. That's fantastic. And that's yeah. on Friday morning. That's on Friday at 1015 at Rolling Hills. And I do believe the same day she's going to be at Cedar Mountain. I'm not sure what time. So if Cedar Mountain parents, uh, Rolling Hills parents, want to get involved mm -hmm. and they want to get the forms, what, what do they need to do? Well, the forms are going to go through the homeroom teachers. Right. Um, every student will get one. It's not a requirement. It's, it's strictly, um, you know, on a, a can-do basis. Sure. You know, it's not anything that is... Um, um, a have to do thing. Most kids do get involved, um, whether it's a five dollar donation, right. five hundred, whatever it is. Right. Everybody, you know, we're grateful for anything that um, you can do. Um, and we have an actual event date of February tenth through the fourteenth, where we're going to do the cargo nets and ropes this year. Okay. And we have great um, student um, SEA volunteers that come in and help with that process as well. That's fantastic. So um, we usually a cutoff date after that event is right. for the money. Right. right. So we're looking at the end of February as a Mid to end. Yep. Mid to yep. end. Of right February. in the twentieth. Right Great. around there. So. Great. So it's a competition between two um, professionals, well, uh, Mr. Hernandez. The and thing you. about that is, I uh, like Mr. This. Hernandez doesn't really know about it yet. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna he's going to find out um, yeah. this, and maybe I'll email him a little bit good. later. Good, good. But yeah. Well, listen, it's just a wonderful program. Nine thousand dollars towards a great cause. Yeah, it absolutely. teaches our children to be involved and care for others, yes. and of course, um, the involvement of the parents. We thank them very much for their donations and the grandparents for their donations. Absolutely. But also, thank you to you. Uh, this is a major program that you have made sure uh, has um, excelled, if you will, um, here in Vernon. So thank you. We were actually in the top ten in New Jersey last year in that's fundraising. That's fantastic. So, yeah, that's fantastic. So, yeah. Mr. Villegas, another great example, and Mr. Hernandez, of course, another a great example of the staff here uh, who care for our kids. So look for that this yes. Friday and then of course in the next couple of weeks. Happy New Year to everyone. There's a lot going on this week and we wanted to particularly take a look at some of the great things that our students are doing in different sporting events. So let's take a look. Carly Van Tassel, congratulations. She has been chosen as field hockey Player of the Year by the New Jersey Herald. Uh, not only did they have great success on the field as a field hockey team and went further than they've ever gone before, and their record was outstanding, but Carly has now been chosen as the player uh, in the area. So, Carly, we're very, very proud of you. Congratulations. Speaking of pride, the Vernon Township hockey team are the winners of the Sussex Cup. The varsity ice hockey team won the Sussex Cup for the fourth year in a row. They defeated the Sparta Jefferson team uh, on the 31st on New Year's Eve. So congratulations. It was a uh, great, great win uh, in a 4-3 to three overtime goal. Uh, Aiden, congratulations on scoring the goal. And, of course, that was on New Year's Eve, not on 131. All right, catching up with our wrestling team. Now, this is a shot from the summertime, but I wanted to give a background story here. I've been talking to Coach Poinkowski and the great program that they have uh, at, in Vernon, and he's done a lot of preparation in, in anticipation of this season. So the wrestling team did two roadside cleanups in Vernon. They participated in the PAL 5K run and walk. They hosted a summer barbecue. That's a picture there from the summer barbecue at the PAL for all the wrestlers, K through 12, uh, to build the program from the youngest grades all the way to the high school. Congratulations to Coach Poinkowski and his wonderful staff for doing this. And they recently held their kickoff dinner at the Vernon Foreign Legion. And uh, it, was, it was catered by Double S Diner. So thanks to Double S Diner, who we love dearly, and also to the VFW, and the money was donated back to them because of the 50-50. So the wrestling team is doing everything right in order to prepare for a better, a great program, uh, but also uh, making sure our children are taken care of. What a year. The women's track team, this past weekend, won the small schools division of the Murley Invitational. Way to go, Vernon. And I'm going to show you at the end of this um, some amazing uh, relay athletes who set a record. But there are the gals with their 
plaque. Congratulations to Coach Saganic uh, for uh, this great win. There's the women's wrestling team. Isn't this the most amazing, amazing picture? Uh, there's the team with their coaches. And ladies, I cannot tell you how proud we are of you and all the wonderful things that you're doing to advance rights for women. Uh, getting out on the mat and wrestling and being a team really makes us a progressive, wonderful high school. Congratulations, ladies. Now, here's how they've been doing. The girls wrestling team competed in the first Hunterton Warren Sussex All Girls Wrestling County Tournament on Sunday, uh, January 5th. And Patience finished second. Gianna DeRosa, Melanie Heller, and Drayden Charman and Sky all took home third place medals. Couldn't be prouder. Okay, Catherine McCabe um, is an ambassador for the NJSIAA. There's Mr. Foley in the background. This was at a board meeting, a December board meeting, in which she spoke about her role and all the great things that the NJSIAA are doing. Catherine, we couldn't be more proud of you as well as a great athlete, but also a great ambassador for Vernon Township High School. And we also had the Glen Meadow authors uh, talking about their writing projects. So congratulations to them as well. Speaking of high school stars, there's Ryan Lally on the left and Caleb Gibson on the right. And they were selected as the New Jersey Coaches Association all state teams. I'll say that again. All state teams. This is not a regional team nor a county team or even our team. This is the all state team. Ryan's first team selection uh, and Caleb was our third team selection. And this is for section two. Uh, congratulations, boys. We're very proud of you. At the Board of Ed meeting in January, which just happened this past Monday evening, our new board member, Jennifer Pellet, was sworn in, along with returning members, Kelly Mitchell and Joe Sweeney, because the three of them won the election in November. So they were sworn in for their new three-year terms. Congratulations to all three. We are delighted to have them on the board. Uh, we thank them for all the hours that they put in. Uh, around that table behind them and, and in preparation for any of our meetings and their dedication to the district. Uh, these are people who deeply care about our students, our teachers, uh, and our staff. So congratulations to all of them and uh, congratulations on being sworn in by Mr. Kepnes this past Monday. Glen Meadow Writers, there they are. This was from the December meeting, all talking about the great things that they're doing at the Meadow. Congratulations on this writing project to Mrs. Peggy Mitchell, uh, their teacher, as well as some of the other folks at Glen Meadow. Here's an interesting project, and this just came through this morning. Mrs. Carlson's math class uh, does this cardboard challenge um, in which they create, they design and create uh, games using their math class as the sort of foundation work uh, for their creations. So she said, my students have brainstormed, designed, and created cardboard arcade games over the past few months. They are finally done and ready to be played. So they're all located, I believe, in the band room where the students will actually be able to play games that have been created by the students through math projects, project-based learning. Congratulations, Ms. Carlson's math class. All right, here they are. Look at these superstars because, uh, uh, you know, you see the posters in the back of great track runners. And this was taken at an indoor meet that they were uh, just in. But this is the 4x200 team, which not only won their events at the Invitational, but they smashed the Vernon track record by eight seconds. Now, if you're a track person, you know that track records fall by 0.5 seconds, 0.2 seconds, or one second. This group smashed the record by eight seconds. And from what I hear, the coaches were standing at the finish line looking at each other, um, astonished uh, at what these young ladies accomplished. So congratulations to them and congratulations uh, to their coaches uh, for all the work that they have done. Mm -hmm.